All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for SSSS, SSSS Gridman, Gridman episode, episode 12. 12. The finale. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. All right. So, mm-hmm. Akane has been forcefully turned into mm-hmm. a kaiju by Chief Over Justice Lagan. Yeah. This yeah. is a problem. Yeah. Well, it's actually like perfect for the ending now because yes. we, yes, we absolutely. get to see how it well, it's a literal down. battle for Akane now. Yeah, yeah. and uh-huh. and in some ways, this part of it mm-hmm. is just the the distraction. In some ways, the the finale in terms of the uh, right the the conflict, the but, the battles and whatnot. Yeah. Right, but mm-hmm. the the true finale will be like mm-hmm. with what she kind of resolves yep. inside herself to however be, to the, do and all. They that. decide to do that, yeah, because exactly. they have many options and there are many things that they've still left unanswered mm-hmm. so and whether they, they, they want to answer to them or not you know and all that sort of stuff have to do yeah we yeah. got a lot we got a lot of stuff at the previous episode revealing a lot of the big kind of world stuff and also mm-hmm. things regarding utah and gridman and in this case this needs to be akane's finale because right. the last episode very much felt like the grid men alliance kind of getting uh-huh. getting their act together but and akane is the main character up. when it comes right down to it so. yeah yeah and we yeah. do have uh you know we do have a uh, rika uh with akane right now so yes. maybe that will end up being relevant as well they could even they could do the thing of the oh no we must save rika and akane because you know whatever well, why not I mean, they could do that, but they could also have it be a thing where Rika's words, you know, mm-hmm. reach Akane yep. Yep. through the kaiju uh-huh. transformation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's all right, oh, y'all. It's going to be good. Finale. Without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, my oh. God. That's, that's a oh. kaiju. I thought it would just be something more like, you know, the giant uh, over Justice Lagan in the, in the OP, but no. All right, all right. Oh wow! My God. What? Wow! Oh, that. that was so cool. That, that was so cool. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, I love the look of this kaiju. Well, like think about it this way: it's also like a horrifying kaiju. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you hear that scream? It's yeah. not like a human scream. Oh yeah. Oh so the yeah. The idea that this thing is oh my god. Wow. That is a spectacle. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh my god. This is amazing. Yeah. What the heck? Oh. 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 No, he's just like an observer, you know. Oh! They're trying to pull her out of it. Yeah. Oh! Yeah! Oh, that's amazing! Yes! 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 グリッドマンドメはどこ行ったんだよ。俺が戦ってたわけじゃないし。おい。ウェイクアップ。いや。ウェイクアップ。いや。ウェイクアップ。いや。ウェイクアップ。いや。ウェイクアップ。いや。
の凄まじい情動が残っているじゃないか。わあ、OK。So man。All of them are gonna go in. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, this track. We're going for something so quiet. <gasps> yes! Oh. Yes! What a guy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh, now it's yeah, yeah, now, now it's just a person in a costume finishing it. It's just two people with the backdrop. Yeah, nostalgic look. Okay, <laughs> I love all the. Hey, you know, Evangelion and Kill a Kill style explosions with the oh, yeah, yeah. and everything. Uh -huh. Oh, and we're just going for it now. Let's do this. Because you gotta, you gotta end it with a fist fight. Whoa! <laughs> but I have fused with my gun. Uh. <laughs> Was that a JoJo's reference? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Alright. We're. <laughs> oh. Okay, but. Wow. ああ。<笑><笑> Gonna reset the Yeah. I mean the the OP's playing now, so Ugh po Wow. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at the room, the real outside. world. Yeah. All right. See, it's her leaving the room. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Wow, nice. Gurn Lagon. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see you grit those teeth. Yeah. Of course. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. This. Yeah, this is huge. She packed up all her kaiju. She cleaned her room. Gotcha. That's the thing. She, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She actually, like, mm -hmm. let go of... Oh. Yeah, we still spent time with the real you. Even if, like, they might not be real, they still got the time to see mm -hmm. who you are and still like that. Well, and... And if they're all, and if it's still all something that's inside Akane's head, then this is that internal battle of you know her, mm. you know, learning to love herself. Mm -hmm. Wow! Awesome.
開けて<笑>きれいどっか行っちゃえってこと<笑>違うよ<笑>だから神様最後にお願い聞いてくれませんか<笑>私は茜と一緒にいたいどうかこの願いがずっと叶いませんように。ナイス。ナイス。ああ、マン、ナイス、グッド。やっかー。やっかー。やっかー。That was waiting for this. That was waiting for this. That was so long. The boxes went with her too. Do you notice that?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Butsumi was Shinjo san ni yoko to atta n janai no? Oh. Shinu hodo are! Huh? そこには入れないや。No, that's good. グリッドマンの地元でも、俺の活躍宣伝しといてくれよ。<笑> sure, buddy. 次に来るときは、ユータじゃなくて俺に宿れよ。そうじゃないと、別れが悲しくなるからさ。Oh. バカった。The marble? Yeah. Yeah. 目覚めた響き、全部覚えてないのかな。<笑>私が宿ってもなお、立海の思いは変わらなかったように。That's a clever way to have the confession just happen. Oh, oh, dang. All right. Okay. That's pretty good. Nice. Yep. Okay, yeah.、Mm-hmm. It's like the exact same look.、Mm-hmm. Oh, there's yep, the exact、yep. same people. All right. Awesome. It's the exact same place that, uh. <gasps> oh, his parents are finally coming home. Whoa. Okay, so is this is this the world she created, or is this. Well, this is, this is the real world, and everything was made from this. I don't think so. I think this is. Yeah, I think this is still the, the world she created. Hey, cool. Nice, nice. Kaiju ka. Kimi mo de shu. Demo kari wa kaisu. Uchi no kakun to ishu da. Wait. Nice, nice. No way. What the hell? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. Yes. All right. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. That's that's brilliant. That's fantastic. That's brilliant. Oh my god. All right. All right. That's cool. All right. Oh my. They god. did it. Yeah, they did, they it. did it. They did it. We had like, you know, and and this was one of the endings that that you yeah, know we considered. We that you know, made sense. Yeah. yeah. And and them not、yeah. going into the details、mm-hmm. of the new world, but then having it just be Akane waking up. You know,、yep. like like、yep. th- that being the the transition, right? Yeah. Is fantastic. Yeah. And. Having it be live action for the end there. That's but, brilliant. Th- well, well, it's brilliant, but I'm glad that they had it, that they did it in that way. Because if、mm-hmm. they had tried to do it something where it's like going out into the anime studio or whatever, that would,、right. yeah. that would have not, like, that would, that, they would have had to do a lot more to, to, to make that work. But here, it's fantastic. It's awesome. It makes it, because you're basically taking this. Story and you know,、mm-hmm. as it took Satsu, right? It's, it's one of those, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, the things that, that you know, like, like there's a lot of nostalgia for people with these, and, and、yep. you know, you have you, you watch during that impressionable time that gives you those, the, that, that, that optimistic ideal to, to, to strive for, and, and all of that stuff, as cheesy as it is in a lot of, you know,、yep. in a lot of cases, right?、Yep. But it's that cheese that we need a lot of the time, and,、totally. and, it's, and it's that kind of a thing that, that Akane needed here, right? Mm-hmm. And that a lot of us need even more so when we grow up,、mm-hmm. right? And that's、yeah. why, you know, we, we cling to these shows and why they have so much nostalgia because it helps keep us grounded. It helps us when, when everything is a lot more complicated and a lot messier,、mm-hmm. right?、Um, it, it helps us. And so、yeah. doing, doing it in that way was just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Akane was the god of that world. She、yep. created it、mm-hmm. in her own imagination. Yep. She used it as a, a fictional place to escape to from her own 
real world problems. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we know that primarily most of them were inside her own head in terms of her problems. But what I like about this is that there's no explanation as to how um, how like, parallel the world right. she created is to her real world. Uh-huh. But and you can infer, you can fill in the blank, you can mm-hmm. you can basically write whatever story for Akane that it was in the yep. real world that the problems that she had to resolve that you want to right because it tells mm-hmm. you all the problems that she had that mattered for this right. imagination world to exist yep. in the first place and those yep. are the mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. that led her to be in such a bad way in terms of right. the depression in terms of the mm-hmm. anxiety in terms of the the uh, wanting to basically create yeah. a bunch of have a bunch of creations that are forced to be her friends yeah you know because yeah. she probably didn't have any friends in in the real yeah. world and the then, idea of seeing her then asleep, you know, just yep. alone mm-hmm. underneath covers right. when it's daytime. Yep, you know, not just, taking care of herself, you know, and yep. the whole the the whole cleaning of the room thing. That was that was, yeah, that was fantastic. I'm I'm so glad it wasn't just something of like, uh-huh. you know, going like to another you know reality and then right. and then whatever. It's, it's no, that was yep. oh, that was really good. Um, they they went all out on the visuals this episode. Mm-hmm. The uh, yep. the Alexis Carib showdown. And then also the Grid Knight and Gridman just right. duo combo. The, <laughs> There's so many moments where right. it was just like, oh, oh, that, mm. that, I want to freeze that and put that as Oh, yeah, background. especially the one with, like, the, the, the explosion. explosion. And, and it the was two like, of them looking right. at it. And because and it, it felt like they were basically, like, towards the beginning of the episode, it was a lot more, like, traditional, like, anime that, we, mm-hmm. that I would expect from, like, you know, this modern right. time, right? You know, and then as mm-hmm. they went, they started doing more tricks to basically evoke that that old, you know, Saturday morning cartoons kind of feel. And it went more 2D, actually, as things yes. went on. Yeah, it went more thing. 2D. And, yeah. and it almost looked like with the explosion, like maybe that was something where they blended, like like they did something to make the explosion just look really real, possibly, mm-hmm. almost like they were set pieces and they actually did an explosion, you know? Possibly. Um, I don't think it was, though. Yeah, but there, but... Was, there was something about the smoke that stood out to me, but... Yeah. But yeah, and then and then eventually going to the point where it's no, we're just we're just a couple of dudes in suits, you know. And it's like, oh, how nostalgic. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, um yeah. Yep. God, I'm I'm glad that everyone got their happy ending. I love mm-hmm. that we have this uh this power of friendship ending that lends itself to having these characters matter. Because here's something I find to be very very interesting in that they had to walk the line of this in the the ending of the show is that if you have it be a, that it was all inside you know akane shinjo's head mm-hmm. or inside her imagination or a dream or whatever any right. kind of ending where there's a there's another reality that's more important to our main character effectively than um than this one mm-hmm. you, you can't invalidate the story that just happened here right because it's all a manifestation of her inner psyche but the thing is it will protect it will perpetuate on despite her situation now in the real world this world is going to continue being you know right. beyond that and i think the reason why they showed all those things of having the parents come back the the people that were in school that she didn't uh-huh. like now just being there and stuff like right. you know all all these things i mean they were restored back in a previous bit but uh-huh. but the point being is that everything's back to normal now is a whoa so this right. world didn't collapse with the uh the leaving of of, of shinjo akane we have well, uh-huh because because i yeah. feel like what they're basically saying then is that the the thoughts and 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 dreams both literal and figurative that mm-hmm. we have are powerful right yes. in the real world very and there's beings out there that that try to feed those and and try to prey on those right sure right and that and that basically the town that existed it was a thing that existed in Akane as, you know, her imagination or whatever, sure. whatever it represented, right? Yeah. It could you have know. been just her creativity at one exactly. point. Exactly, yeah, just her creativity. Yeah. But then the the town being created and, and sectioned off and everything like that and the parents leaving and, you know, and, and the, the kaiju and all of that stuff, mm-hmm. that was something that happened when she hit that low state and Alexis Carib was was doing his, his evil, you know, voodoo stuff, yeah. right? And because of that, that's that's how it took on all of those all of those appearances and things like that and then now that it's been resolved now that alexis carib has been defeated now that akane is able to go back and 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 live her life right that all of that stuff continues Mm -hmm. right it still continues and and however that whole works with the individuality of the people but then that could just be considered to be you know 
fragments Again, of herself, you know, made yeah, manifest. I would say they're perpetuated out, and that's mm-hmm. the thing. She didn't have fragments of herself out there. That's the thing I think that separates her from Gridman. She was mm-hmm. isolated. She was disconnected. She fragmented herself internally and created this world, but none of those people out there are projections of her. They're projections of her creativity, maybe, if anything. Sure. Maybe, if anything, they're projections of people in her environment that we can extrapolate out mm-hmm. as being people that existed in her real world. And while, of course, maybe the personalities and the mm-hmm. uh, the aspects of where they came from come internally within her, so you could see that as a fraction, I think the idea is that she didn't leave uh she didn't leave uh broken basically right she carries mm-hmm. everything within her that she yep. needs to be whole within herself yep. the the idea that i guess you could say that you know they're since they're reflections or projections of a part of herself mm-hmm. then when they help her in some ways it's That's her, her helping, helping herself, herself. yes right. but that doesn't make her fractured or fragmented oh no no no, no 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 it's just a it's I, I see it as just being like how when you're well, like or at least when I'm thinking about things there mm-hmm. will be the the side of me that's like you know maybe the logical side of me and then there will be the side of me that's like the curious side of me and things like that and 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 they all sort of come together and you know come to a decision on what's gonna you know what's gonna happen right hmm. um and that in the case of some like say Akane here um or sorry Rika mm-hmm. Rika is Akane's like I, I feel like she's the the shred of hope that Akane has left that okay. basically that maybe things can be different. Right. You know, it's, it's that, it's that wonderful bit of, bit of positivity, self-love, you know, whatever you want to call it. Okay. That, that would be so cheesy in, in any other show where it's just the, I'm the, you know, Rika's the character that gives the overly dramatic speeches about hope and whatnot. Right. But in this case, she really is that last thread of Akane that's hanging on. Huh? you know okay and and that's why the conversations are so important that's why when when they do the power of friendship you know defeating alexis carib it's it really is the conversations and and thinking about the other people that are in there that help her right because because it's it's basically solidifying for herself that she hasn't given up yet that the battle's still there to be fought um and that it's it's striking up that balance between the the supernatural entities that are coming in to help her and attack her and also her own power herself to decide and and live her life Mm -hmm. um even though she definitely needed the helping hand yeah i i definitely see the connection in that it all comes full circle once you say that she created them within a specific purpose and they have no Mm -hmm. choice but to fulfill that specific purpose and that rika in a lot of ways her choices are not her own if we see her as more or less a thing that uh, Akane wills to be a certain way. I just feel like that breaks a little bit of the the tension down surrounding the fact that um, there are moments where she's not doing that. So in some ways, I would say that the actions taken Mm. within this world Uh still affect Mm -hmm. Akane's uh, projections out there. So they are created at a certain point to be a certain way Mm -hmm. but just because they start out that way doesn't mean Mm -hmm. they're going to end that way right the reason the reason why i think it still works is because of how how almost inherent it is to the human experience to be internally conflicted Mm -hmm. so so you know in in the same way that these these people right were, were things that akane created and then eventually they took on a life of their own i feel like if you have you know a a belief a thought an idea and that's important to you, right? Mm-hmm. Eventually, it'll take on a life of its own. And you can have multiple of those. And those things can end up coming into conflict with each other. And you you might not have the control perfectly of that thing now because it's it's something that's set in motion. It's such an integral part of who you are that now you, you need to reconcile it, right? You know, it would be so much easier to just be able to say, all right, reset. I'm going to, you know, destroy you and, and you know, remake you. But that's, that's a lot easier said than done, right? Mm-hmm. And... So, you know, but then, but then it's also the whole thing of like, does that make it any less real? Because now there's the the universes, and then there was that whole hinting with the with the you know the the flash of sparkles and the you know the portal opening up for a second. There's the possibility that there could be someone in this world. I'm I'm not sure if I'm reading into this wrong, but something, someone in Akane's world that then is going to go into a deeper like one layer down world. No. Um, no. So yeah, maybe not. Maybe that was just for something else. Maybe that was Akane officially leaving. You know, 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know where that came from. I'm like, wait, I'm not following. Did, uh, did you notice the, the, because they, they showed it, the, maybe it was just them showing the beginning of the show and how it happened, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure there was a part where, where in the end of the show, in how things were, you know, at the end, right? Not, not showing the beginning of the show. They did something that was basically a, du like very close to a duplicate of that first shot of the show with Akane looking up in the sparkles and things like that. Right. Yeah, but the, those were not the sparkles. Those were the, uh, those were the pieces of, of Gridman separating out in the first episode. Sure, sure, but, um, but that there was, it, there was that same like opening up a portal to like another another world. It seemed like. Yeah. I don't or maybe it was just was like the portal. clouds getting blown away, showing the 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 motherboard looking stuff up up above. Yeah, I don't think that was in the first episode. I think if anything, there was something similar to that. But oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. They didn't actually show a portal in the first episode. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they just showed five pieces poof, splitting out and going different mm -hmm. directions. It felt very Dragon Ball esque, where you have right just the, the a Dragon beam Ball of energy, getting... mm -hmm. and then it splits into five beams of energy, and they right. go off in separate things. Well, and I felt like that was just Gridman entering the the world, basically. But but you know the part that I was talking about in this episode. In this they... episode, yes, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. 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 I don't mm -hmm. think that that was a part that happened, at least I can go back and check, but I don't think that was during the live action part, though. No, no, it wasn't during the live action oh, part. Oh, okay, cool. No, it was it was a part of resolving the, the other stuff, and maybe I'm just getting confused about that because there was a part where I was wondering if they were going to, if basically they were going a layer up while keeping it, you know, No, animated. they're just going to another world, like, like I think that's the thing, is that because oh, this is Akane's sure. world, the world of Kaiju exists, so the world with Gridman Oh, right, also yeah, yeah, exists. Yeah. Right. Well, so world, well, she's yeah. created other universes mm -hmm. beyond this one just by this one existing. Okay. Or, yeah. or here's another possibility: mm -hmm. is that if each person in you know in the real world, in the live action world, uh -huh. potentially has their own universe that is their their psyche or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That that um, Alexis Carib was wanting to go to a different one of those to prey on someone else, right? And that's why they had to keep him from escaping. And then yeah. Gridman and all them were going to either another one of those or just going back to their world that's a separate world from which they go to intervene on behalf of, you know, people. Okay. I have a few things that I think are a simpler explanation okay. that makes it a little bit more Akane-focused because that's where the story's main character kind of focuses uh -huh. everything, is that she loves uh, kaiju shows. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. She That's loves why they the mentioned real, world. real kaiju right. shows in here. So I think that if we're going to go with the projection route for the friends and stuff, you have to do that for everything. And in in this specifically, the idea of having the kaiju end up being this thing that are they're they're misunderstood. They're you know they they need to be kind of you know treated a little bit better. Uh -huh. She ends up basically being the head kaiju. Now, I think in some ways, okay. because of the idea that she needs to be saved, she calls into being this, you know, character from a show that she really likes or liked or what have you to be basically the hero to come in and give meaning to this, you know, to the kaiju that she's creating, you know, to give them a thing to, to, to have conflict with. And if sure. you think of what Carib does, if you think of what Carib does, he's basically in the beginning just a thing that she might have portaled in from that same show in right, order yeah. to manifestations of the two sides of herself bat doing battle yeah exactly mm -hmm. and then it just ends up being a thing of where over the course of time she gets more and more into her depression and she uses right. alexis mm -hmm. carib as a means to punish herself for the things that she's you know uh, uh not a fan of about herself and then, and then and then the whole thing ends up being a thing where her creations end up saving her and waking her back up right. which is maybe what she subconsciously uh -huh. wanted all along the reason why like but the idea that it would be other people's no, no. universes before you know? this i would have agreed with you until the part where alexis carib is like ah yes i feed on people that do this you know i'll find another akane shinjo right i think you he's know. a real thing but like yeah. yeah it's yeah yeah well i mean they 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 leave a lot of the resolving everything in this episode by the very nature of, of how they ended up doing it and kind yep. of how they had to do it, they're leaving things up to the interpretation of the audience, right? Because uh, yeah. they're not because they're not exactly spelling everything out. And I'm, yep. I'm very glad that they do that because because pulling off in general just the whole story, like because this isn't the first time people have wondered, could I do a story where at the end the main character wakes up and it was all a dream, right? But the question is, how do you do that and actually have it be satisfying as opposed to just being like 
just one of the most awful moves you could ever do as a writer, right? Mm-hmm. And and they do that here, but because they're doing that, because it's something that is so abnormal for regular storytelling, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that are sort of amorphous and ambiguous, and, and because of that, they, they're they leaving it up to the imagination because this is in a dream anyways, right? Right. Um, uh, yeah. And yeah, I think the thematic thing of what you're saying makes a lot of sense in that what they're saying is that people in general create worlds to an, to escape to and inside those worlds they're free to let loose all the emotions that they don't yep. feel comfortable mm-hmm. you know right showing in the real world and i think that the idea that there is a being out there or there are beings out there that do battle essentially mm-hmm. over the souls of people who have their emotions trapped and stuff like that i think that comes through a little bit of a you know a little bit of a desire for things to be you know so much more yeah. than just this which fits in pretty well with the idea of wanting to escape to a, another world so that people project out their emotional battles to have a much more grand meaning than even they they do it's really just a health issue you know sure and that's mm-hmm. something i would say that either explanation works fine I just think that my explanation is a little bit simpler and uses more of the mechanisms of the the world because it's about Akane then. It's not, it's like this whole show is about Akane. It's not, it's not a thing about other people out there in the world, I would say. Well, right, but other people out there in the world exist. Right, but they don't exist in this show. They don't, they, they, they're, they're never. We haven't seen them in this show. Yeah, they're, we've never seen them because this is Akane's story. Right. So everything that I would say is in her world is there in the world because of Akane more so than okay i and that's just my that's just my, my it, simpler explanation well, of what well, i feel I, like and 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 i would go for that if it didn't seem that they said explicitly that it wasn't that multiple times in this episode but um okay uh the way they handled things with with utsumi rika and yuta were were fantastic i i loved the way that they basically had everyone like, like I feel like it was it was basically like a meta commentary on the usual cast of the kinds of shows where you end up having a lot of the people that are kind of useless, you know, like Utsumi and Rika, like like in another show they would be well in a Tokusatsu, yeah. uh, right, right, yeah, exactly. You, have, you know, you have the two friends that are there yeah, 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 but like but like even more than that. Yeah. right, but not even in just like Tokusatsu, like all kinds of stories out there. You've got the the two friends that that don't really shouldn't really be there. They're just there to sort of like help prop up the main character right Mm -hmm. and the way they made them have a reason for existing because this is akane's world it's akane's head and she needs people like this right um and and that that's what it's all about so therefore they're in a lot of ways doing the most important role you know that it almost doesn't really matter what the gridman or not the gridman Mm -hmm. alliance the the neon genesis junior high you know students are doing right Mm -hmm. um even though you know if if Gridman and Alexis huh. Carib and all that are real, then yes, they are playing a part. Um, but I I love how they did that because even with someone like Utsumi of having him realize I'm not really doing anything, I, I feel like I'm I'm useless and stuff. That's that's good to have for a character. Um, and then yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The the show ended like we like we thought one of the one of the ways would go. And Akane being the main character all along is going to make this show, I'd say, a good, fun one to rewatch and yep. give kind of a little bit of a, oh, okay, what, what, mm-hmm. what was this one meant to be? But what I also think is really cool here is that this was something where it opened my eyes to a genre of television that mm. I just kind of missed the majority of as a kid. I only watched really, like, some Power Rangers with a friend. Like, I didn't uh-huh. really watch Tokusatsu ever so the idea that this was a this was a big thing for so many people out there and then this was a celebration of that this mm-hmm. was a uh, a tribute if you will yes. to uh, an older style of of doing uh, mm-hmm. cgi basically but then having the whole world in itself be the cgi because it's in a tokusatsu imaginative world of a live right, action right. character. It's, it's a great way of, of most me- explaining it. Yeah. It's one of the most meta jokes, I mm-hmm. would say, in the yep. entire show. Yep. And you yep. don't really get it until the very end mm-hmm. when Akane literally wakes up from her mm-hmm. slumber. And I, 
I love the idea of characters waking up to kind of realizing their potential. Mm-hmm. Like they were saying here, their identity, their, mm-hmm. their, yep. that their, that it's everything's going to be okay. That, they, that there's people out there that care about them, all those things, because the idea of people being asleep is a, is a, yeah. is a cool kind of way to start this. But I like to look at the way things began in this story to kind of give like a little bit of a coming full circle to see if there's anything that they were directly pointing at. And Yuta wakes up, and that's how the story begins. And oh, it's interesting nice. that Yuta is mm-hmm. the one that wakes up. Yeah. And yet, Akane is the one that wakes up at the end here. Now, you know, maybe maybe there's something there that we can we can extrapolate from, but uh, I I really like how they didn't they didn't shove the idea of this being you know Akane's story from the yes. get-go right out there. Yeah. They really wanted us to buy into the imaginative world that she had created, and I, I did. Right. And it wasn't really until, like, episode, what, five or six or something uh-huh. that I started to clue in them, like, wait a yep. minute. And, and it's minute. funny because because they were almost telling us the entire time how it was going to end, yeah. not just with the fact that, you know, it's about Akane and starting the show with Akane, you know, like, before they get to Utah, you know, mm-hmm. um, but the fact that they're referencing actual shows Mm -hmm. you know like yeah that's a little you know in order for that to happen right then it's like oh well there you go yeah this is the the, there is a live action element to this and and maybe we would have known more about that if we had known Mm -hmm. you know that the gridman is like an actual show or an actual like thing Mm -hmm. or the the, ultraman or yeah ultraman yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh it's like yeah or and one of the things that I loved about how they did the the final series of battles this episode mm-hmm. was that and and also looking over the course of the series is that it almost feels like there were the kaiju right that looked really cool and things like that but then there were the like like the one that they were like oh that's kind of a lazy kaiju that you know <laughs> right the that was just the a sack dude in, yeah. yeah yeah the sack the dude in a costume right yeah. um it's almost like because this is all a representation of Akane's mind and that she watched those shows as a kid, that's her regressing to something more vulnerable, right? Mm-hmm. Where where both, you know, for, for good or bad, right, she's reaching a lower and lower point. Mm-hmm. So she has less and less to cling to. So she's going back to those earlier, earlier childhood memories. Yeah. Um, that's like... There, there's the perspective that you have on it going through the show for the first time, right? You know, but I feel like going through it again, like, or, or sure. in hindsight, you know, like maybe it'd end up being very similar, but sure. But, um, I, I love how they do that because I, I feel like this show has amazing rewatch value and I love it when stories do that uh-huh. because, because a lot of times I feel like I'll, I'll, I'll get it on the first go through and then it's like, ah, and then I can just sort of like, you know, remember the show whenever I want to rewatch it, you know? Right, right, um, yeah. But, but when it's like, no, 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 there's other stuff that you, that you, like, you've missed that you will see when you go back and rewatch yeah. it. Like, that's, yeah, this that's, is that's the good those. stuff. Um, yeah. And then finally for me, just the ending uh, scene, I would say, the, the, the important mm-hmm. ending scene with Rika and Akane in the yep. room. Oh, yeah. And, was... and th- that's, that's <sighs> the part there where I, I think that if anything was taught in this show... That's the part where they kind of hit the nail, like they they really mm-hmm. like nailed it in there. And it was that Akane is lamenting to Rika about how she's a horrible person, mm-hmm. and Rika is just like, "Yeah, I know. Yep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like I know who you are. Oh, man. there's there's this yeah. there's this aspect of people that I think it's it's really um it's really important that we don't uh." Uh, we don't fall into a delusion of basically denying what we do and and uh, and the right. way that that makes other people perceive us and mm-hmm. not just in the way that makes other people perceive us but the idea that y- you are what you do in a lot of ways you are something beyond that obviously but in a lot of ways to everyone else you are what you do what you say mm-hmm. how you do yep. all those things there so akane's right in that the things that she did showcased who she is mm-hmm. but but because yeah. she's there, you know, being being vulnerable to uh, uh, to Rika there, uh, Rika is able to basically just say, "Yeah, I accept that. I accept that." Yep. And you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Like, there's something really powerful in just knowing that you're not alone, and the oh, idea yeah. that 
your yep. problems are really not that special. It's just sure. something that everyone else has to deal with in their own unique way. Right. And not to belittle it, but it's as a thing of it's going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Well, like, like even if you even if you have a problem that's like something that's so overwhelmingly mm -hmm. pressing and oppressive in a way, just because you are able to talk about it, you, like just that you were able to bring it out into the open and yep. and and process it, you go through the process basically. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And something that everyone has to do. Um, I think that the whole tie into that if anything, to the whole Gridman combat encounter is mm -hmm. that they brought up the idea of mortality or the finite versus the infinite. Oh, yeah. The idea uh -huh. that you don't really have a process that is meaningful in the infinite because eventually it will all just kind of, you know, go by because of the passage of time. It's infinite. Mm -hmm. But with the idea of your life being finite, your problems somehow somehow feel like way more pressing and stuff because it's like ah I need to get this right s as soon as possible, but I think that in some ways like as long as we're not alone in this whole thing, as long as we acknowledge that, as long as we're willing to be open and communicate with these kinds of things here, in some ways it's actually the fact that we all share this curse called mortality or this blessing in some ways. Right, depending on how you want. Depending look on how you it. want to look at it. Yeah, yeah that in some ways drives us towards things like connection and sure. it gives us the mm -hmm. ability to then yep. help others who are suffering and just kind of being there. So the idea that her final act of freedom, her final act of will of uh -huh. Akana in this world was letting go of those crutches and being bold enough to go and do things alone, which she's not, but that's kind of what the scariest part of it probably was for her was that if she went back to that world, it's like, oh, well, I'm not taking any of you with me. This is right. this is something where I'm going to end up being all alone again, and I can't handle that. And no, Rika, mm -hmm. Rika gave her the thing of like, no, you're not, you're not alone. That's, that's yeah. something that uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you can just take to the bank. Yeah, yeah, that was that that whole scene was so fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. like the early part of this show was great. It was it was it was good fun. It had the, the mystery and. Things like that, and and it had those moments where, you know, you could you could realize that this show was going places, right? Right. You it know, wasn't just going to be a monster of the week. Exactly. Kind of right. Yeah. Right. But, man, the the last few episodes in particular, and and this one, this mm -hmm. one was the perfect bow on top. Yeah. The human element was absolutely incredible. Yeah. It, there was there was so much heart to it. And especially considering the sort of like, like trippy, heady, like way that they were showcasing it, you know, sure. because they sure. didn't, because it's, it's, they weren't as upfront about it as something like say inside out, right. Where it's just like, okay, here, we're in the head of, you know, of this person. And now we're all the different emotions and things like that, you know, and, and yeah. we're, and you know, we're going on an adventure, right. Mm -hmm. It was a lot more complicated and messy as you would expect, you know, right. um, for a person that's going through a really rough time. So the yeah yeah like the and 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 the whole thing of yes her cleaning her room yeah like that was yeah amazing on so many levels and and the fact yeah. that that Akane came to understand and accept the parts about herself that are very much not perfect mm -hmm. you know um yeah I I love it I love it so much yeah I'm just I'm just glad that we didn't have some kind of again some kind of evisceration of this world for the purpose of showcasing that it was all Akane. I oh, like, uh -huh. the, I like yeah. the more abstract yep, yep. versions you can take this where it's mm -hmm. like, none of this all collapsed into Akane at the end right. of the story. Yeah. This world still exists. She just... Rika's wish is mm -hmm. that I get to see you again. But I hope this wish is never fulfilled right. so that you are constantly living your happy, healthy, exactly. whole, wholesome yep. life yep. out wherever that is. Right. Saying that this world is going to exist out there. there you are, don't need it anymore. You don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. But but if you ever are worried that you're alone, just know that there is a world of people mm -hmm. out here that believe in you, love right. you, care about you, mm -hmm. are your tomodachi. You know? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> we are your nakama. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, classic power of friendship anime ending with the brilliant twist mm -hmm. of one of the endings that we thought would be good to have for a right. show like this and and not showing anything beyond her just waking up yep 
was fantastic because that's real life. You don't know what happens next. Like you, right. you, yeah. you can just, you don't. There's no you guarantee. You can only just wake right? up and get out right. of bed down. Yeah, your exactly. Foot in front of the other next day. Because because here's it's, the thing. It's tough. Here's the thing. In, in in this kind of setup, one of the questions could be, but it might be horrible. Her situation yep. isn't yep. changed, right? Exactly. But, but but it's not about whether her situation changes. Yeah. It's about how she will respond to the situation. Yeah. And because the whole conflict was about her not being able, feeling like she could actually properly respond to the situations whatever whatever hand life dealt her yep but now now she's made a decision now she's going to you know i wonder if there are people that have analyzed the contents of her room to see if they can extrapolate out more of the story that's going on with her in the real world well given given the fact that she that she loves um kaiju Mm -hmm. that tells us something about her given the fact that it was about having friends that tells us something about her Mm -hmm. um and all the dark places that she went to in this world, that also tells us a lot about her. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels it feels very much like they're trying to say that this world has a superimposed element of herself onto her real world that she experienced. Right, it's because everything that she, that Akane brings into it would be from the real world too. Like, like, like uh, that that that's the part where I. I still think that the Gridman Carib stuff and all that is the only part it's from the real world is that it's, 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 you know, it's from the show, you know, it's from the, the, the idea of the Ultraman, whatever kind of, well, okay. We can agree, agree to sure. disagree on that, but, but like all the, all the problems that Akane herself has, you know, uh, yeah, like, yeah. like there's like, you know, the, the stuff from within the world, you know, there's a, you know, you, you could argue one way or the other for that. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this is a this is a good one. You yep. made a good choice, Jacob. But now it's my turn to make a choice. That is true. So y'all yes. get ready for next week. Uh, if you're watching this on uh, on Patreon early access stuff, you don't have to wait a week stuff like there. But if you want to watch the next episode's reaction right now, we're going to be doing a new show called Paranoia Agent mm-hmm. by the mad lad legend satoshi khan yes the only show i believe that he actually did i believe so and i know yeah. he worked on other shows but this was like uh, his creation right. here and uh yep. yeah it's a it's a short one core show that's her it's got a lot of uh dedicated fans around yes. there and, and uh, given that it's this old and it still has that many dedicated fans like yeah 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 Oh yeah, boy, so we're gonna be good. We're bringing up an old one, an old one that Jacob and I both haven't seen, but apparently, like we should have seen. Right, like the fact so, that we haven't seen it is kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah. So uh, next week, Paranoia Agent episode one. Mm-hmm. So thank you all for watching this episode's reaction discussion. If you want to see that premiere reaction discussion for Paranoia Agent right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access so you can chat with us about these stories, about anime in general. You can also talk with Jake about his book. Yes, my sci-fi novel Battle Lines is still available for order on Amazon. The link is in the description below, so go check it out. Leave a review. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.